last study, we wanted to better understand uh, the sexual behaviors and immunologic profile of people who develop HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer. And what we found is that there are additional nuances beyond just number of lifetime sexual partners that help to explain um, the risk factors for becoming infected with oral HPV and developing HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer. Indeed, there were a range of questions around sexual dynamics, um, such as the intensity of sexual partnerships or the number of partners you had over what amount of time that influenced age of onset and risk of cancer, also having um, aspects of sexual partnerships, such as having a partner who was much younger, what act, what sexual act you had uh, around sexual abuse, so having oral sex as an early sexual act. Um, they, these different factors all helped to explain additional levels of risk beyond what's been captured by number of partners alone. This makes a lot of sense because, of course, um, there's the odds of whether or not your partner is infected whenever you have a sexual act. And while number of sexual partners has been a strong predictor to help us understand people who are um, at increased risk for an HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer, we now understand that there's additional aspects to um, sexual partnerships, which um, also uh, explain the risk and likelihood of becoming exposed and therefore have bearing on how likely uh, you might be to develop an HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer. Yeah, in understanding sexual behavior and HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer, patients often have a lot of questions about why me. Um, and indeed, we see that many patients with HPV-related oral pharyngeal cancer have not had a lot of partners and have just been unlucky enough um, to become exposed in one of the partnerships that